Cyber attacks will be a significant component of any future conflict, whether it involves major nations, rogue states, or terrorist groups. Hackers from overseas are being blamed for an attack on the Pentagon, the single most significant breach to date of America's cyber defenses, at least, of course, of the ones we know about. Now the Pentagon is implementing a new cyber defense strategy, and here to evaluate it is our friend and contributing editor Richard Falkenrath. Richard is a principal at the Chertoff Group and a former security advisor to President George W. Bush. Richard, you have combed through the strategy for operating in cyberspace, the Defense Department calls it. What are the biggest takeaways? Well, the biggest takeaway is this is really a strategy on how to secure networks. It leaves out a lot of what the Department of Defense's cyber strategy really is, which is in part offensive operations against potential threats and theoretically now retaliation. And so what I, this is in a way a public relations document. It's a very competently written document, but it's only about part of the overall strategy. Okay, so we shouldn't interpret from either this document or comments that uh, James Cartwright, the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, made yesterday that it's all about defense. The Defense Department and the Pentagon and the government have other plans. They just aren't telling us about That's them. That's exactly right. It is not all about defense. It cannot be. It would make no sense to just sort of sit back and not be engaged. When you create something called a cyber command, this is an offensive warfighting command subordinated to another, the strategic command, it is to wage offensive operations. I mean, that, that is not the only thing it's doing, but it would be crazy to create a Department of Defense military combatant command that had no offensive mandate. So let's talk about the, the defense angle, as it were. What do we learn from this document? What is it effectively that the government is acknowledging? Well, it acknowledges, first, they've got serious insider problems and problems with how the people who have lawful access to the networks practice what they call computer hygiene. So these are basic things about when you log on, do you change your passwords, do you have strong passwords? What can you put on a thumb drive? Do you put your thumb drive in there? Do you download software off the Internet? Are you on dodgy websites? So these and, are... And the case in point here would be Bradley Manning and WikiLeaks. Well, a little bit different. Bradley Manning, you know, he was an insider, but he was an insider threat. This is a computer-savvy uh, young young private who had access to a government network and downloaded it off CD purposefully. He was not unwitting in right. what he did and then gave it to WikiLeaks. Uh, so a little bit different. But the document does talk about the insider threat, talks about the need to educate the workforce and to watch out for possible deviance inside your workforce. How about the outside threat? The government relies on all kinds of software and hardware manufactured outside the United States. Could these become Trojan horses effectively? Yes, they could. And it has some startling statistics in there, like the fact that the Department of Defense has 15,000 different computer networks it has to defend, over 9 million different devices it has to worry about. And it says, look, we're going to try to do our best to take care of our networks by tightening down and deploying advanced active defenses, but we can't do it alone. And we have to have it take a whole of government approach, involve the other agencies like Homeland Security and the private sector, like the Internet service providers. And quickly before we end, Richard, how about the ease of attack? Just how easy is it to get into some of the Pentagon systems? Well, you've got to be pretty sophisticated, but if you do invest the time and effort, there are available, you can buy them, hacking tools that allow you to get in. Not necessarily to the Pentagon, which should be a little bit harder, but often they're defense contractors. And these 24,000 files that, that Bill Lynn was referring to, also Booz Allen, which we talked about earlier in the week, these are not part of the Defense Department, but they are defense contractors have access and course of business to a lot of sensitive DOD data. Richard, it's amazing stuff, and you're the best person I can think of to talk about it with. Uh, Richard Falkenrath, contributing editor here. He works at the Chertoff Group. He used to work advising the president, George W. Bush, on security matters.